previously on the Seegers family Edivitz venture. The summer of 2008 for me was repetitive. I was really unsure of how it was going to go. We were doing the same things over and over and over. We were framing, we were siding, we were uh, constantly lifting uh, trusses up or plumbing walls up. The funniest thing definitely had to be the bat. Somewhere within this basement, there is a vampire bat. And I'm afraid to be in the building with the bat. Waiting to suck the blood of everybody. I'm a little creeped out by old houses and old buildings to begin with, and so my entire family is teasing me since we bought this building of how I'm going to live in this big house and not be afraid that it's haunted. <laughs> One of the most monotonous things was to pull out the nails from the lumber that we were reusing from the building, and I pulled out so many nails that I actually filled up a five gallon bucket. We gave Gwen a video camera. Gwen wasn't ready yet! Now I am. <laughs> <laughs> you want to videotape me one time and you videotape Jane more. No boy, I actually just videotaped you two times. Wow, look what I found at Canada Dry. Old ginger ale bottle. I like the sleepovers because we can just kind of watch movies. I really get a kick out of waking everybody up. Girls, get up. Get up. Kind of brings back those days of being a drill sergeant. If you like our video series, you'll love our website. Check it out at www.edificeventure.com. See pictures, read blogs, find cool links, plus information and tips to help you get started on your own green, sustainable home improvement projects. Yeah, we got four kids, a cat, and a dog, and we're looking for an open space where we can stretch our legs and start a new life and build us a greener place. Structure stood with no inner walls and a big hole in the roof. And now it's hard to build the American dream. And brother, this is living proof. A giant labor of love is falling down on County Road 1. But with TLC and nature's harmony, we can keep it from a coming undone. is sponsored in part by Habitat for Humanity of Elkhart County, building decent affordable housing with people in need, WVPE 88.1, a NPR station, inform, entertain, inspire, Anco Products Incorporated, our energy saves you energy, and Heritage Antique Lumber, crafting fine furniture, custom cabinetry, and trim using lumber from historic barns. August 30th, 2008. The summer was coming to an end and we still had not finished the siding to the building. The weather was great and the kids were doing their usual things while Penny and I worked. Jory was telling us all about her high school drama. I was going to watch the game last night, but there was like a lot of drama going on. Zane was taking tools without us noticing to work on his own projects. Gwen was busy documenting what her brothers were doing. Yeah, I'm just videotaping Koi and Penny just saying. And Coy, well, he was just being a camera ham. So while the kids were doing their thing, Penny and I worked on something new dealing with the siding. What we're doing right now is we're finishing up the edges of the greenhouse roof that butt up against the exterior walls of a normal house. But what we have to do is we actually have to protect that area so water doesn't seep down into there and get into the house again. And what I've done to be sustainable is I've taken scraps from the actual roof 
and bent them into an actual J channel that we're putting up against the house and the roof. And what this is creating is a J channel where the water, if it gets up in there, is going to roll continually down to the edge of the roof. I put some butyl tape in between that J channel and the roof that's here, and then I bolted this up against the outside exterior wall with the uh, same bolts that I use for the roof that have a rubber gasket on it. Underneath this though, we actually use some weather stripping. Normally it's used when you uh, for a starter strip when you're doing shingled roofing, but it also helps to protect and keep water out. Now that we have all that done, we're actually gonna put some of this flashing, aluminum flashing up against the wall, and this will hang over our J channel that we made, keeping any other water that gets into that It'll run down the flashing into the J channel, down the roof, and onto the ground. We're going to put the house barrier, the weather wrap barrier, over that, and then we'll actually put our cement fiber siding over that again. And you can see with all those layers, it's going to be pretty difficult for water to get into the house. Hello, mate. If you look very closely on the floor here, you're going to find some bat poop. Believe it or not, we thought this was rats for the longest time and we kept sweeping it up and we couldn't believe how disciplined these rats were that they always pooped in the same spot every time. But then I realized it's not rats, it's bats. And he's hanging up there and pooping down here. Wild, isn't it? September 3rd, 2009. We finally, after several weeks, completed the tile in the kitchen. Since I had never really been the best at grouting, I brought my cousin Jim Hagen in to put his grouting skills to use. Plus, since he knew what he was doing, I decided to pick his brain so I also would know how to grout a tile floor. What are some of the key things that you need to pay attention to when you actually lay tile down? Keep it level, keep your uh, line straight, are your patterns straight if you're doing a diamond shape like this with the offset squares in it? Because it's easy to get off. This doesn't look too bad. That way if you keep them level, you won't have problems later on with a high tile. When you have high tiles, what kind of problems does that cause? Usually your wife cuts them when she stubs her toe. <laughs> <laughs> What's a common mistake people make when they grow? Uh, sometimes not getting enough in, maybe getting an air pocket in it. Uh, taking too much out when you're cleaning it. Not getting it set up fast enough and it starts to dry out on a sand grout. Sand grout sets up a lot faster than epoxy. What do you suggest to use epoxy or sand grout and why? Depends on your application. Epoxy is a little harder to work with, but it's uh, more durable, less likely to stain as easy. I prefer the epoxy. Sand grout's okay easier to work with, that's for sure. <laughs> so if you're a beginner at grouting, you would say maybe use a sand grout instead of the epoxy? Uh, I'd start off using a sand grout in a small area until you get used to working on grout. I mean, there's different additives you can add to the sand grout to make it either more flexible or harder. You definitely want to get the sand grout sealed after a couple days. You want to let it sit. It helps protect the sand grout. That way it's not as easy to stain. Where did you get your experience in tiling? Worked in an RV manufacturer in the service department. First several years, I did quite a few tile jobs. <laughs> I didn't say the name of the manufacturer due to the fact they just shut our RV service center down after years of dedication to them. I guess you'll have it. How important is it to get the tiles clean right away? Well, what I'm doing here is getting a lot of the excessive grout off and leveling it out, putting the lines into the grout. I suppose you could let it sit, but you're gonna play havoc later. Especially when it comes around the grout lines, you won't get them even. This tile's a little higher than this one. It's gonna be a little tricky trying to get that grout line totally flush. I didn't lay the tile though. Who laid it? Warren Seegers, as far as I know. Give him the credit. So it's September 27th, and we are having a sighting party today, and we are waiting for some friends and people from church to show up. And they're a little bit late, but that's okay because I am late everywhere I go. 
So we are gonna do the siding on the east side of the house today and hopefully be able to get that all done. We are trying to really make a push to get all the siding and everything all buttoned up because it's starting to get cold up here in northern Indiana and we wanna be able to continue to work on the building this winter so the less drafts be better. As Petty said, our intention was to complete the deck side of the building, but we ran into an obstacle. Our ladders were not long enough to work safely any higher than the house wrap. As I have said before, putting siding up is a very tedious task on a building this size. Every so often though, the wildlife would make its presence to break up the monotony of siding. Besides the grasshopper, several toads kept the kids entertained. No, don't hold it that way, it'll pee on you. It can give you water. Just for the record, I really didn't smush the toad. It only appeared that way because of the camera angle. No toads were harmed in the making of this episode. Stay tuned to the Seegers Family Oedipus Venture. When we return, we change gears and we start working on the greenhouse once again. Antique Lumber is a small family run business. We reclaim lumber and we turn it into something you can be proud of and you will be happy with. The uniqueness of our cabinetry is one of a kind. Heritage Antique Lumber makes furniture, crafts, mirrors, frames, and more using reclaimed barn wood. We at Heritage Antique Lumber consider ourselves more than just craftsmen. We are also artists. Visit our website and see our quality, heritageantiquelumber.com. Since the early 1960s, Texture Fine Insulation has been an environmentally friendly product. Our unique process diverts millions of pounds of fiberglass scrap from landfills each year. Today, high quality standards have made Anko Products a world class industry leader in high tensile strength, resilient insulation products. Anko Products include laminated metal building insulation, insulated flexible duct system, and indoor air quality, Green Guard certified Texture Fine Insulation. Green isn't a new initiative, we started in the 60s. Anko Products, our energy saves you energy. It is October 8th, 2008, and uh, we are back in the greenhouse again. We are diverting our attention from putting the siding up on the outside. Our initial plan was we were going to put up all the siding around the house and then come back and work inside. The reason we're diverting our attention back to the greenhouse, the construction permit that we have is all because of this greenhouse. We thought because we had a foundation in here from the original structure that this would be a pre-existing structure and we were just replacing what was here at one time. We bought this without this structure on here and we rebuilt it, we had to get a building permit for new construction. We're running really short on our building permit because it expires at the end of the month. If we finish this, get all of our inspections done and complete this within the time, it's considered a remodel and we don't have to have a building permit as per se. We will still need a remodeling permit and that still requires us to have an electrical permit and a plumbing permit since we're putting new plumbing and electric into the building. So as you can tell, we had a lot of work ahead of us and a short time to do it in. 21 days to be exact, but that didn't detour Penny from making suggestions that added to our workload. Remember that apartment that we lived in by the lake that had an old doorway and they turned it into shelves? They just, they blocked it off in the back and then made it built-in shelves. I mean, and I just think it would be a perfect place to do one of them, not all three of them, but one of them as a built-in shelf. Uh. No. Just one window and No, shelf. you're not getting it. To be honest, her idea wasn't that bad. It was just bad timing. After our discussion, we still had a delay in building the deck in the greenhouse. It appeared we found yet another form of wildlife living in the building. We have chipmunks that actually live in the basement here. They scurry and run from this hole, run through the greenhouse, and they go through into that hole there. Correction, it wasn't chipmunks in the greenhouse, it was squirrels, and not the flying type either. These were ground squirrels. Yes, squirrels that live in the ground, and to keep them from coming into the building, I had to seal up their back door. Moving to the real work on October 10th, 2008, Tony Labarski and myself securely bolted the support pole to the floor. October 11th, concerned about water passing through the foundation wall, I applied a sealer that is used to stop foundation leaks. October 12th, 
For an extra measure to stop moisture, we lined the foundation and floor with heavy plastic sheets. We also started to frame the greenhouse deck. October 16th, we called our inspector, Ron Weiss, and asked him to stop by so we could find out exactly what needed to be done for us to be complete with the greenhouse. His answer? Really all we need is the safety factors. If there's a uh, stairway going down, need a handrail. Okay. If it's going to be considered living quarters, it needs to have a um, smoke detector. Okay. So if there's a set of steps to be finished, it needs a handrail. Okay. The steps have to be legal. That meant we were closer than we had thought. October 18th, we put the subfloor under the deck, insulated the floor and foundation walls, then put an additional layer of plastic over the insulation. October 19th, the whole family pitched in to finish the decking to the deck. On October 20th, Penny and I finished the railing and stairs. Yes, we beat the deadline with nine days to spare. Stay tuned to the Seegers Family Edifice Venture. When we return, we start cooking on the kitchen. 88.1 WVPE Public Radio is a vital communication resource that strives to inform, entertain, and inspire. National Public Radio is an internationally acclaimed producer and distributor of non-commercial news, talk, and entertainment programming. WVPE serves local listeners with a distinctive blend of national and local programming and annual events. In 2008, WVPE launched a sustainability initiative which includes green events and programs. Learn more at WVPE.org. Habitat for Humanity of Elkhart County does more than build houses for those in need. They provide education on personal finance, homeownership, parenting, and other life skills to help those moving into these houses turn them into homes. Habitat for Humanity of Elkhart County, working with people from all walks of life to build simple, decent, affordable homes. For more information on how you can help, visit www.habitatec.com. It is November 8, 2008, and today what we're working on is on these soffits. We're starting to put some of the insulation in. And what I mean working with the soffits, you have to have an airflow coming from the soffits going all the way up through your rafters, going up to the ridge where the ridge is vented. And what we have to do is put one of these pieces here, these styrofoam pieces, and there's two of them. One of these pieces has to go in between the two by fours in the 16 inch center. The purpose of these rafter vents is to keep the insulation from pushing all the way up against the roof of the building. If we didn't have this, there would be no way the air could pass from the soffit all the way up to the ridge vent. So what this does, it puts a, about an inch and a half space in between the insulation and the roof that allows that air to pass through. The difficulty rating for this project, one hammer. The difficulty rating for getting the rafter vents from Zane, four. Oh, All right, it's November 15, 2008. Today with me is my nephew, Charles. I have Coy and Zane, my two boys with me. What we're gonna do today is we're gonna put studs in this area right here that at one time was gonna be one of the doors to the kitchen. And there's another side on the opposite side looks just like this. In between, in the wider opening, what was once gonna be a breakfast bar is now going to be the entrance to the kitchen. So uh, we're gonna get, get to work on it. You ready? You ready? Yes. Okay, good. Let's go. 35 and 7 8. Crap, I cut this board the wrong length. How'd you cut it the wrong length? Uh, because this is actually one of the studs, and there's two 2 by 4 One goes above and one goes below. I forgot to subtract that three inches off of my stud. So I'm going to cut three inches off of this. Remember to do that with the other studs. We're gonna need two of these at 35 and 7 eighths. It was 
this project that made us realize any plans we already had were not set in stone, so we stopped sketching our plans in pen and switched to a pencil with a big fat eraser. It's November 16th, 2008. It's a Sunday. We're going to put nailers that go around across the top here where our insulation will stick in between and also we'll be able to put uh, the, uh, the drywall on that and we'll have nailers for that also. We hope it doesn't take too long to do. So. Yeah, it's cold. She's cold. She's I'm always cold. It's a funny thing. We always say our projects won't take that long to complete, but it never fails. We manage to do something that makes it last longer. Holy crap, we'll plug it again. We will eventually get this done. Yes, it's usually something stupid like repetitively tripping over an extension cord, but sometimes Penny or myself has a moment of enlightenment to help put us back on track. Hey, look, since that's a reclaimed board, I think that we have pre-drilled screw holes from the nails we took out, and I bet they're 16 inch on center. You know what? You're right. They are. They're all the way across. And it's just a coincidence that they match out exactly what we need them to be. That makes measuring easy. Sure, easier to measure, but not easier to work on from the ladder. So to make it easier, I jumped up to work from above. Sometimes the kids are a lot of help in, sometimes they're not. I gave them a whole bunch of But they're always good for a chuckle when you watch them work. Anyway, we finished putting the studs in and added the insulation. Now the kitchen was the most complete room, and that wasn't saying much at all. See, when we get this room done, we'll be able to sleep out here again on the weekends because we can put one of those little heaters in here and this will all be locked off. Stay tuned to the Seegers Family Oedipus Venture. When we return, we'll give you a sneak peek of our next show. The Seegers Family Oedipus Venture is sponsored in part by Habitat for Humanity of Elkhart County, building decent, affordable housing with people in need. WVPE 88.1, a NPR station. Inform, entertain, inspire. Anco Products Incorporated, our energy saves you energy. And... Heritage Antique Lumber, crafting fine furniture, custom cabinetry, and trim using lumber from historic barns. If you like our video series, you'll love our website. Check it out at www.edificeventure.com. See pictures, read blogs, find cool links, plus information and tips to help you get started on your own green sustainable home improvement projects. Next time on the Seegers Family Oedipus Venture, we turn up the heat and get cooking on the kitchen by putting up drywall, we get wired for lights, and we discover a cool tool that makes drywall less of a chore. <laughs>